So every single planet that humanity has ever discovered outside of our solar system throughout the galaxy, they're all listed in one place, a central repository called the Exoplanet Archive. And this is actually available for free, so anybody can just go online and download this huge wealth of information and they can kind of play with the data and figure out uh, what sort of patterns they can find. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, this video we're going to talk about what sort of data is in this archive, we're going to look at how we can download that data, and then we're going to actually do an example project where we're going to build a bar chart race. Now if you're not familiar with bar chart races, this is what they look like. So they start out with uh, certain properties, in this case it's how each exoplanet was discovered, and then it shows you over time how many of them were discovered, and you can see kind of how different ways the exoplanets are discovered uh, are more popular over time. And right now the transit method is the most popular. Um, cool, so let's just go ahead and dive right in with that. Uh, first thing we want to look at is what the Exoplanet Archive actually is, and this is just a quote from their website, uh, basically saying that <laughs> a bunch of scientists get together, they collect all the data they have from all the different papers, and they put it in one central repository called the Exoplanet Archive. Now the Exoplanet Archive might look a little bit daunting here, uh, when you first look at it, but the uh, thing to remember is just to focus on this right here, because this is what really matters. This data tab right here gives us all the information we need. Uh, for this video, we're going to be looking at the composite data set. Essentially, it only lists each planet one time. That uh, doesn't have any of the conflicting data, because you know, different papers might have different information for each planet. So we're just going to go with the composite data, which is, to their best knowledge, the most accurate. Cool, so when I first pop up, you'll have all this stuff, all this information. For this video, we don't need to worry about all these different parameters. Um, we're just going to go ahead and select the columns that we want, which we do over here. And we're going to clear all of them. And the only ones that we care about are the discovery method and the discovery year. Now, obviously, if you're doing something else, you can select any of these and include them on your table. Go ahead and hit update. And boom, there's all the information we need. Um, so when we download this, uh, if you were downloading with values that had error limits, like luminosity or radius or, or you know orbital period or stuff like that, you can choose not to include the error limits if you want, um, just to make your table cleaner. If you do include them, it'll have one column that'll be how far below and one column that's how far above um, included in your data. So that's something to keep in mind. And go ahead and download your table. So I actually named mine exoplanetsdiscovered.csv. And now that it's downloaded, we actually need to um, process this data set. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like. I'm going to use numbers. You can use Excel if you want. It doesn't really matter. So this is what our um, downloaded data looks like right here. Now, uh, in order for us to import it into Python or into Jupyter Notebook, we actually need to delete all this stuff up here. Uh, so you can just go ahead and delete it. And boom, now it's nice and ready. Um, if you're using numbers, you're going to have to export it back to a CSV file, just because Apple is so great. <laughs> and desktop, export, go ahead and replace it, you don't need the old one. And perfect. Great. So, um, this is uh, something called the Jupyter Notebook, if you're not familiar with it. And this particular Jupyter Notebook is actually being hosted by Google. Um, there's a link to it in the video description down below, so you can actually just pull this code up, and then all you need to do is um, you need to use this file inside this environment, and you can do that by mounting Google Drive inside of this uh, runtime environment. So I already have mine mounted, but uh, if you don't yet, if you haven't used uh, Jupyter Notebooks inside of Colabs before, it's super cool. Uh, just click on this button right here where it says Mount Google Drive, it'll let you log in, and then once you've got it mounted, you can actually uh, just save files right into your Google Drive, it's really convenient. So go ahead and drag that right into wherever you want in your Google Drive. I'm going to drive mine into the Colab Notebook section, it'll take a second to load it, and then once it's loaded, it's right here. Uh, now what we need is the file path. So go ahead and copy the path from the file you just dragged in. And now let's look at the actual notebook itself. So if you're not familiar with what Jupyter Notebooks are, uh, it's basically a fancy way of running Python code where there are cells and you can run each cell individually and they compound on each other. So for example, I'll run this cell here, it'll run these two lines, and then when I run this cell, it'll act as if these two lines were already run, and then we also ran this line of code next. So it's just a cool way of running Python. Um, they're really fun to use. 
Uh, within Python, we're also going to be using two different libraries, the pandas library and the numpy library. So if you're not familiar with those, they're really useful for different data science projects, and they make it really easy to play with data and manipulate it. Um, great. So let's load that data. So the first thing you want to do is you want to copy and paste that file path uh, that we had from over here uh, that has your exoplanets in it. So go ahead and just paste that right here. That'll tell you exactly um, where it is. And then this line right here will take that um, those exoplanets and it will put it into a pandas object called exoplanets. Basically it just makes it so that we're able to manipulate that data. And it looks like this. Um, so yeah, there you go. You see that this is just the exact same uh, basically CSV file that we had from before, except for now we can mess around with it. So the first thing we want to do is this data is nice for us to look at, but the data manipulator that we're using, Flourish, it actually requires that we have data a little bit differently. It requires that we have a bunch of rows of years, essentially, so every column is going to have a different year, and then every row will have its own uh, discovery method. That might be a little bit confusing, but uh, you'll see once we get it formatted. Uh, it's just a little bit easier for their algorithms to parse. And actually data preprocessing like this is pretty common. Uh, you'll have to reformat the data before you can graph it a lot of the time. So this is good to get used to. Great. So like I said, the first thing we need is to have rows of discovery types. So that's what this is doing here. Um, it's basically just saying give us all the different discovery methods in a NumPy array and then give us all the different unique discovery methods that there are and we'll put it inside of a list called discovery types. So when I run that, we see that we get a list of all the different ways that you can discover an exoplanet. Awesome. The next thing here is we need to know when the start year is and the end year is so that we can make a list. And it turns out that there's a list um, of about like 31 years. So the first one was discovered in 1989. Next one was discovered in 2020. Awesome. <laughs> so now that we've got those two things, we're ready to go through our data and parse it together. Now this code might look a little bit jumbled, um, but it's not too bad. Uh, basically, there's just these two main for loops here, and that's the meat of the algorithm. And so we're going to go through every single year from the first year, 1989, to, or to 2020. And then we're going to go through each different discovery type within that year, and we're going to calculate or sum up how many planets were discovered by that method. And we're just going to go through and we're going to say, all right, discovery type A had you know zero or one or two this year, so we'll do that. And then we'll add them all up every year, and so we get a running total of how many planets were discovered by each method every year. Um, if you do want to get more insight, again, this code is available for you to play around with, uh, so you can totally uh, tear it apart and figure out how it works. I don't want to go into too much here, just because that would take a lot of time. <laughs> so let's go ahead and run it, and let's see how it looks. Here it is. Cool. So like I said, you've got the years up here on the top. So in 1989, there were no discoveries except for one single exoplanet. And then for the next three years, it was all by itself. It was the only known exoplanet, the only known world outside of our galaxy. Then in 1992, we found a few more. <laughs> and they kind of just add up until what we have here. So the last thing we're going to need to do now is just go ahead and take this exoplanet years data frame and convert it into a CSV file so we can use it in Flourish. So go ahead and run this last little line here. It'll convert it directly into a CSV file, and you can literally just copy the CSV file and put it into a program like TextEdit uh, in Mac. If you're on Windows, you can use um, something like WordPad or Notepad or something like that. Uh, so just make a new document. Um, whoops. <laughs> Go ahead and just save it. This is what a CSV file looks like, in case you didn't know. And then go ahead and just save it. I'm going to put it on the desktop so it's nice and easy to find. A planet formatted. And let's save it as a dot CSV. Great. 
Now in Windows, it might give you trouble if you don't have certain things turned on, but just try and change it so it's a .csv file, and hopefully it works. If not, Google it. It's pretty, pretty easy to find out. Flourish is a really great data visualization program. Uh, definitely make an account and check it out. We're going to go ahead and um, start from here, assuming you've made an account. We're going to make a new visualization. Flourish has got a bunch of different templates you can choose from. Um, if you ever have time to look at them all, there's a bunch of really fun ones that help with data visualization and making it easy to really see what's going on. Um, we're going to make the bar chart race today. Uh, my computer's going a little bit slow. <laughs> Uh, so this comes pre-populated with a bunch of random sample data, but we just spent the entire video making a bunch of good data uh, for our exoplanet, so we're going to use that. So you'll go here to data, then you'll upload the data right here, and upload the CSV file that you just barely made using um, numbers, or sorry, text. All right, we're going to import it publicly because, unfortunately, we have to. Now, my computer's slow, so I actually have to reload this page in order to edit these fields. Um, so I'll just pull this back up again. And we're actually using data that starts right here from column B. So for our values, we want it to start at B and go to the end of the matrix. And then for categories, we actually don't have any. So we don't care about color coding or images or anything fancy like that. So we'll just leave those put and then let's go a little preview. So it looks like everything is working. Uh, you will notice that these, these labels are a little bit cut off. You can actually mess around with a ton of stuff here. And so let's just go ahead and up this to like 13 or so, so that we can see everything. There we go, that's looking a lot better. Great. Awesome, so then once you're done perfecting it, looking at all these labels over here and making everything look pretty, all you have to do is just hit this export and publish button up here and you can literally download HTML code, or you can publish it and share it, and then download the HTML code. Um, it's just a great tool. And so yeah, that's, that's our video for today. So thank you for watching.